It's very red. It doesn't stay on the skin. None of the red stays on the skin. So if anybody would like to look at these or talk to me about... Um, I, I, I actually teach people now to do their subcutaneous injections. What's the shelf life of hydroxy, do you know? Well, I think maybe... I, I, I don't... What's that? Hydroxy is stored in the fridge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? No. no. Yeah. It's it's not. Doing, they do in surgeries, yeah. Pardon? Because they do in surgeries, they store it in the fridge. Because I, when I gave a talk to nurses last yeah. month, I told them, look, you, you know, before you inject your patients, roll it in your hand just to warm it up to, to, to room yes. temperature because yes, it stings. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah no, it, as regards to this association of methyl into hydroxy over a year, um, if you keep it in the fridge, then the hydroxy is kept fresh as well, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? If it's dissociated into it. Oh, I so, see. Yeah, that is yeah. the point. But I, I don't know. Has anybody done it? I mean, they did do a very, very comprehensive study about the um, degradation, but they, they didn't uh, mention hydroxyl on it. No, I'm, I'm just saying, if you if you kick off with methyl, and uh, you know that over the years it's going to turn into hydroxy, uh, which you would keep in the fridge, you may as well keep your methyl in the fridge in the first place. and then. Yeah, there was one of the professors at the, the round table dinner last night. He, he wasn't able to stay today. Yeah. But he has found a new way of producing methylcobalamin, okay, which is much, much cheaper than the current method. Yeah, Plus, he's also able to produce adenos or cobalamin. Yes. To find out. And it's stable. He's found a way of stabilizing it. So. Great. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Intramuscular or subcutaneous? You talked about subcutaneous. The surgery instructing me to self-inject with the hydroxychloroquine said intramuscular. Is there a major difference between well, the two? Well, I, I mean, in my opinion, uh, the, there hasn't been enough studies done on it. But apparently, the thinking behind it is we mobilise the muscles, and therefore it has a chance of getting into our system better. But the data doesn't support that necessarily. Yeah, so, there's no difference between that. I'm going to, anybody who wants to talk to me about providing methyl, I will provide it to UK people now. It's a vitamin, you can buy it, you know. You know, it's a shame that you can't buy it from yesterday, but from today you'll be able to get it from me, if you want it. Yeah. Got a drug dealer amongst us. It's a vitamin, it's a vitamin. <laughs> no. can, can I have another bit? We, we're plagued with this idea of, of uh, 200, uh, what is it, uh, nanograms per milliliter. Uh, the doctors use to, uh, the guidelines say, you know, above, if you're 201, you're okay. If you're 199, you're B12 deficient. And this, uh, it's all, you know, this 200 uh, figure. Have you, I don't know where it comes from. Have you ever heard anything on those lines? Well, in my mind, it just comes to the NHS saving money. Because the lower they make it, then they don't have to treat people. I don't, it's not about patient health at all. It's not about uh, scientific evidence either. It is not about patient symptoms. So it's almost like a, a number that suits the budgetary guidelines. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It's far too much. I, I have heard a possible source that um, the 200 to 900 is the range over which the test is accurate. And there's nothing at all to do with the body. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, we can get the vitamin from you, and could you just give a little guideline? It's a powder, you say, or it's a crystalline. So, how, what's its concentration? How do you take it, and what? If price? you uh, this, this is a ten mil vial. Uh, if you dissolve um, it in ten mil of saline. In these sterile containers that I get from Germany, because you can't buy these in the UK, because God knows what you would do with them. <laughs> um, then you end up with um, one milligram of methylcobalamin for every half a mil. And so that is 20 injections. So this gentleman is injecting every day. He says he's injecting every day. He also, I organized for him, 
in June when he was diagnosed, he had one milligram of methylcobalamin intravenously every other day for three months. Every other day until his veins collapsed, because in the elderly that's not uncommon. And then after five veins collapsed in one day, he decided to inject himself. But And it's only, so that started in June, and it's only I visited him yesterday that he said that he's noticing an improvement in his symptoms. But I'm so happy now, after hearing everybody here and, you know, talking about the pharmacokinetic data with you, I'm so happy that he had the chance to have the intravenous because, obviously, the older you are and the more you've suffered, the more damage there, there, there could be. And I do appreciate Anna's points that this may not be the best way to treat it. We should have smaller doses daily. However, this is the only way we have to treat it now. So and so I'm very pleased. Could you up, you know, how much for the set or whatever? The, the... Well, I have to give you links to get the saline. Right. Because possibly I'm not allowed to sell it. I don't know, because you might wash your eye with it or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the needles are easy to buy in the UK. I, I can show you some examples. I brought some examples of needles. Um, because they're sold to diabetic patients as well. Um, and this, um, I, I do test the batches, I use HPLC to test the purity of the uh, methylcobalamin. And um, I, I thought including, I don't know, something 25 to 30 pounds for that for 20 injections, so something like that. Not extortionate, because I want to make it available to everyone. But, is expensive. Yes. Andrew Scott, my main two things is finally after six months of fighting. Um, would you advise me to ask the nurse to do them into in the vein rather than the muscle? They won't. Okay. They won't do that. And, and definitely I wouldn't do a head drops oh. into the vein. Well, I suppose, you know, um, I, well, I wouldn't, but they won't do it. I, 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 now as my role as patient advocate, I have been in so many doctor's surgeries with uh, so many unfortunate patients, and uh, Dr. Chandra is so rare, so very rare. There is nobody, nobody that would <laughs> like him. Is there any danger in, in people mixing them? I mean, like, I'll take the methyl sublingual -loss, sub lozenges, and I'm also using getting hydroxy from the doctor. No. Is there no problem in mixing No, not at all. And is there any chance that, I mean, my surgery doesn't appear to keep its hydroxy in, in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and it never stings me, and that sometimes I think, well, is it effective? They yeah. just get it out of the cupboard. Yeah. It's so I'm going to keep it out. Hydroxy can be kept in the cupboard as long as it is away from yeah. heat and light. Yes. Right. And it has got an expiry date. Right. As right. long as you use it within that period, yeah. it is effective. Okay. And the other thing I wanted to ask, is there no way that we can't develop a pen like the diabetics use, where if it doesn't need to be um, kept in any special, you know, just kept away from light and heat, we couldn't have um, a file of it in a pen like the diabetics use and inject ourselves two or three bits, of, you know, every day. Like diabetics inject insulin. Yeah. You know, why can we not um, have something developed like I, that? I have got a research proposal in at the moment with two medical schools simply trying to evaluate how effective the different methods of treatment are. Injections are 50, 60 years old. Surely things have improved since then, but there's never been any research to date where patients who have to have B12, are able to evaluate how effective the different treatment methods are. Mm -hmm. And one of the, 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 the proposals is for a pen-like. Yeah. I mean, you've got, you, first of all, you've got to get away from this idea about ranges and references and that, because it's not serum B12 levels. That doesn't guarantee you're feeling great. Mm -hmm. All that does is keep you alive. It's just that your body, and if you're having it normally from your diet, you'll be yes. getting a small every amount day. every single yes. day, and that's really what your body needs. Yes. If you get a great dollop and you've excreted half yeah. of it within 48 hours, hours or yeah. whatever, it just seems that, it seems as if you're flushing most of it down yeah. the toilet. And, and don't forget yeah. that the current treatment regime of three monthly was introduced in 1984. In the 1960s, the injection regime was once every month. Then they changed in 1974 to every two months, and then 1984 it went to three months. <coughs> Worse. Nobody, nobody knows why.
Okay, so the bikini go for three months? Okay. As regards that, that, as regards that diabetic pen, I think there was some argument about whether it was high T, you know, whether it, it, you had to clean the pen. Uh, the diabetics well, just changed the needle tip. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They just have changed the needle yeah. tip. Yeah, there was just a debate about it, that's all. Okay, any other questions? For I, I'd heard it needs to go to the, near the bone marrow. Is that? No. no. Yes. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, Myself, I was lucky because I also uh, had intravenous for three months. Oh, I'm still doing intravenous sessions. So I, I find, I, I think that's very lucky and it's also very rare. But because I'm in a clinical setting, it was not difficult for me to organize. And uh, I, I think it makes a difference when you're a long-term sufferer and you have been misdiagnosed for years and years and years. And it, it, you get scared. I had the tinnitus that someone else here has mentioned. You get scared. When, when you start developing neurological symptoms. And so sometimes when you're scared, you make uh, rash decisions, and sometimes maybe you make the best decisions because you, you, your body or your intuition is saying you, you've got to correct this as quickly as possible. So um, I'm still suffering occasionally with a tinnitus, but this is now um, five months intravenous every other day. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just, um, just if you want to talk to me about the injections, or if you want, um, I, if you twist my arm, I will demonstrate for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone to, who's come along today and thank you to all the specialists that have come along and worked so closely with us. I think since I started working alongside Martin, we have started to make progress and I have started to see small changes where doctors are actually being a bit more aware, um, although it is still in the minority, not the majority. But um, I'd like to also say thank, a big thank you to all the volunteers that have given up their time, um, just not just today, but you know throughout the, the, the time of Pernicious Anemia Society, and also especially to Pat and Andrea, um, who you know do a lot of voluntary work, and sort of, you may have spoken to them on Facebook or the forum, um, and they do sort of give up a lot of their time to help everybody. But especially a massive big thank you to Martin for organising all of this and everything else. Um, and I would just like to say thank you everyone for coming along and you know the more that we can all work together, you know, from you know just Joe Blogs down the road giving out a few posters to local surgery it helps raise awareness and that's all we've got to do is keep talking about it and raising awareness whether it's health professionals or you know sufferers etc so thank you for coming everybody thank you